What is up? What is up? What is up? What is up? Hello, awesome people of the internet. Happy Thursday, everybody. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Guys, we got a lot to talk about today because it's transfer madness right now. The, the season is over for the NCAA. The WNBA had the draft and, um, you know, the, the new rookies are, are getting acclimated. And now it's time to continue to talk about the NCAA because transfer madness is upon us. We had March Madness. We had we had some some crazy craziness um, happen in the in the tournament, and, and we saw uh, South Carolina come on top come come out on top again. And now it's time for programs to figure out a way to beat South Carolina players who have gotten playing time during the regular season, it's time for them to say, hey, actually, I think I made the, the, the wrong decision. I think I want to change and go somewhere else. You know, uh, players who had a successful season, they, they may say, hey, I know I did well, but my team didn't do well, and I want to I be successful with my team, and so I'm going to leave. So there's lots of, lots of reasons for players to leave their schools. It could be a personal reason. Um, it could be a, a playing reason, like maybe not, not enough playing time, or maybe they're in the wrong position. Um, and so lots of reasons for people to enter the transfer portal. And right now we have over a thousand, again, over a thousand women's basketball players that are, that are currently in the transfer portal. Now all of them will get picked up. And guys, if y'all are curious about um, the transfer portal, um, I would recommend you all watch a previous live stream I did that, that sort of walked through everything you needed to know about the transfer portal. So uh, if y'all have questions about the portal, um, this live stream is not is not the, uh, the the avenue to get those questions answered. I would recommend you to, to go to a, a previous video that I did where I walked through um, everything you needed to know about um, the transfer portal. So, so that that that's where I would steer you if you are interested to learn more about the portal itself. Um, now, now that one, that live stream was called, uh, it was, it was a release six days ago and it was HVL, Deja Kelly, Sanaya Jai and 1000 players into the transfer portal. Um, and it's transfer portal, everything you want to know that's in the thumbnail. So if y'all are interested to know about the, the, um, the transfer portal, go to my previous video. Now in this video, we are going to talk about some transfer portal madness. Some of the new stuff that has happened and the breaking stuff that has happened today, uh, when it came to, um, to the transfer portal. Okay. We're going to talk about what's happening at TCU, uh, and how TCU just got some, got two huge pickups, not just Haley Van Liff, but Maddie Scher. Um, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, what, what the, what the, um, what the the Cavender sisters are doing and, and how they're they're returning back to where, where it all started for them. Uh, we're gonna talk about Iowa and y'all. Iowa, I um I highly, highly, highly suggest y'all uh, don't take Iowa off y'all list of of, uh, of places that you that you should be paying attention to because Iowa just got Lucy Olson. Huge, huge, huge pickup. Uh, we're going to talk about who uh, Lucy is in just a moment and why y'all should really be, really be saying, hmm, maybe Iowa will be pretty good next year because, yeah, they got a huge pickup. So so lots of stuff to talk about in this live stream. Uh, but first, 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 um, if y'all hit that like button, that would be fantastic. Uh, that'd be really, really awesome. Uh, Sydney says, can you make a video on the roster spots and who you think would be cut? Yes, I can do that. Yes. Um, yes, Sydney, I can do that. Yeah, Michaela. Yeah. You guys are going to be very relevant. Very, very relevant. RC says, ouch, Iowa lost on Maddie Sher. Uh, they didn't, they didn't know. There was a reason. There was a reason why Maddie Sher, uh, didn't, didn't, um, uh, didn't actually go on her visit to Iowa. There's, there's a reason. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get to that, um, during the stream. Okay. Uh, but there is, there is a reason. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's ball says add a link, uh, for others to find the episode on the transfer portal. Um, yes, I can do that. Uh,
All right. All right, so guys, I am dropping a link in the chat uh, where it is is that one on one um, everything you need to know about the transfer portal. Uh, so if y'all are curious about the portal, you can go there and it'll tell you everything you need to know. All right. Okay, let's get into uh, the big news of the day. Um, Aiden, yes, I did see Seattle's practice facility. Yes, um, and we can actually talk about that after we finish the the uh, transfer. Madness conversation, but yes, I, I do think eventually, eventually the Chicago Sky is going to have to get a uh, practice facility of their own. All right, but I hope y'all are doing well. What's up, Kyra? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hope hope y'all are having a good day so far. And guys, let's get into uh, what you need to know about what happened today. So it, you know, we were wondering, we were wondering where Haley Van Liff was going to go in terms of her next program. And we actually have an idea. Haley Van Liff is going to TCU. TCU stands for Texas Christian University. Um, this is a program that has been blowing up recently. Uh, lots of players are, are deciding to, to go to TCU. And we're going to talk about why in just a sec. But first, let's talk about Haley Van Liff and um, and her decision to go to TCU. So uh, this season for Haley has not been the best. I mean, I, I think everyone can kind of say that with uh, with with some strong confidence. Um, she left Louisville uh, to head on over to LSU, and she played one season with LSU last year. Um, it didn't. It didn't necessarily go the way she intended it to go. So when Haley was at Louisville, she was there for three years. Uh, when she was at Louisville, she was the shooting guard for that team. And she had she was able to get the ball and just shoot. That was that was her deal. Um when when she was at Louisville, you know, she she brought a lot of points in, right? Uh the the in her in her junior year. Um, which was the 2022-2023 season, um, Haley averaged 19 points a game for Louisville. And she was a player who had big buckets at time, at times. Uh, not only was she a um, a big scorer for this team, she was like basically, she was basically Louisville's leader in terms of like just the player who, when you needed a bucket, when you needed uh, to make some good stuff happen for your program, Haley did it, uh, but she wanted to expand her repertoire. She wanted to become a point guard, and uh, she knew she knew that she if she stayed at Louisville, she was going to stay in that shooting guard realm. And so she decided to leave Louisville. Had and then last year, uh, during around this time, she decided that she was going to go to LSU instead to become a point guard and to learn from. Um, a legendary point guard in Kim Mokey. And that experiment has happened. Um, it didn't necessarily end the way that I think a lot of us were expecting expecting it, it to end. Um, it, it turns out that Haley Van Liff is um, not necessarily a, a point guard. She is she is for sure a shooting guard. And uh, the attempts to to make her into a point guard in one year just wasn't su successful. It, it, it wasn't. Um, and so now she has decided to leave LSU after just one year, and now she's taking her talents to TCU. Now let's just quickly talk about what she did this past season for LSU. Um, for LSU this past season, she scored 11.6 um, points a game, so lower than um, the previous year when she had 19.7 19 uh, 19 points a game. Um, one thing about her is is actually her her um, three point shooting was slightly better uh, this season at Louisville or this season at LSU than it was her last season at Louisville. Um, her passing has gotten better, still not quite a, a point guard, um, but her passing has gotten better this this year at at LSU. Um, but her volume in terms of 
um, the shots she takes um, and whatnot, that was not as good. Her, her field goal percentage overall, um, while her three-point shooting was a little bit better uh, this year, her, her overall shooting was was not as good this season uh, with LSU. And and she's looking she's looking to get back to her roots. She's getting she's looking to get back get back to her roots and become that shooting guard that we have always known her to be. So the idea initially, I think, was was for her to um, become a point guard because she's short, and so a point guard would would be successful in um, a point guard would be successful in the WNBA of her size, uh, but not working out. So she is going to be a shooting guard and she is going to a program that I think is the best decision for her. Uh, she's going to a program in, in TCU who has been building uh, ever since uh, coach Mark Campbell has gotten to the program uh, just two years ago. We're going to talk more about uh, coach Mark Campbell in a sec because he is building something very, very, very special. Um, but I, I did want to just start off with letting folks know that Haley Van Liff is going to TCU. Now, here's what she said um, uh, in the in the tournament. She said a lot. Uh, here's what Haley said before she actually put it put her hat in the ring to enter the transfer portal. She said a lot of people have a lot to say about how this year went for me, but one thing they can't argue with is that at this point, I know how to fend for Haley and I know how to fight for Haley, and that's going to help me get to the next level. So she, she, she knows what she wants. Um, she, and she knows how to fight for what she wants. And, and she believes that going to TCU is going to be the best decision for her. Um, and honestly, I really, I, th I think, I think they're right. You know, I, I, I really do. I really do uh, think that um, Haley is right on this decision to go to TCU because TCU was building. Uh, TCU was actually a really, really good squad before they, um, before they, uh, you know, got hurt. Um, what? Not the third person. I don't know what you mean. Um, but anyway, uh, Haley, she's making the right decision. She, she is absolutely making the right decision uh, because the type of offense that TCU runs, which we'll talk about in a sec, um, I think it's going to bode well for her getting back to junior version of Haley Van Liff, uh, just with a with a better with a better um, uh, sense of spacing on the court, with a, with with a slightly better passing. Uh, she'll she'll come into TCU with, but we, we will likely get that Louisville version of Haley Van Liff in her junior year. Uh, quick, uh, shout out to, uh, some super chats. Thank you to the J spot network for super chat, uh, says over 300 people in here and less than 100 likes. Let's get those likes up. Yep. Y'all heard J spot. Please hit that. Hit, please hit that. Um, hit that like button, please. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Uh, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, not Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Green. Uh, Caitlin says, what do you think of people blaming Kim for Haley Van Liff's performance? I think uh, Haley Van Liff didn't have the skill for the one. Kim has taken a uh, two-guard turn one and one a natty. Well, so I, 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 I think, hmm, I don't think you can put all the blame on, on, um, on Kim Mulkey. Uh, Haley wanted to be a, a one. That's what she wanted. Um, and so that, you know, that that's what she wanted. <laughs> you know, she left Louisville because they brought in a point guard and she wanted to try her hand at a point guard position. And so Kim Mulkey gave her what she wanted and tried to try to make her into a point guard. Um, but clearly, clearly that didn't happen at all. That didn't happen. Um, and while I personally do think Haley has gotten a lot better. Um, at playing the point, um, she's not a full-time point guard player. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know necessarily who I'm like totally blaming, because ultimately, like you know, you live and you learn. Like I think it's one of those things where you know she tried it, 
Uh, it didn't turn out the way that she and others were expecting. It's it's okay. Like I, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's like a like a blame thing. It's 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 one of those things where she she learned about herself. Um, and the good thing, the good thing about Haley is that she has another year. So instead of um, she she's using her uh, her fifth year for the for the transfer portal. I mean not not for the transfer. Portal. She's she's using her uh, fifth COVID year, um, and and she's opting to transfer to TCU instead of instead of uh, just graduating like everybody else. Um, not everybody else, but but like others. Um, so I just think it's the best decision. I really do. Um, I, I don't think there's there's blame per se. She learned about herself uh, and she's learned that she's not a full-time point guard. She's not. But she sure can be a darn a darn uh, darn good uh, shooting guard, that's for sure. And with her going to Mark Campbell and um, TCU, she's going to be able to thrive in her natural position. What's up, Go Tiger Hoops on X, a.k.a. Twitter. What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, CAC says, uh, Quidio, when I said, oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, she, she, you know, she, you know. It, it is kind of funny sometimes people refer to themselves in the third person, but, you know. <laughs> um... Uh, Jeremy, I don't think so. So Jeremy says, um, Haley Van Liff, if she gets drafted, she's going to have to play the one. I feel uh, she should have stayed because uh, she was in a new system and another year in L at, at LSU could have could probably help her. Personally, I, I personally would have liked her to stay another year, but, but ultimately, you know, um, she's deciding she's going to go full in on the shooting guard role. Um, I think it is possible for her to make it in the WNBA as a shooting guard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very, very hard, but I think it's possible for her to do that. You know, right now, um, uh, Haley Van Liff is, is five, seven, she's five foot seven. So not the tallest person in the world, but, um, but one player that, that is sort of like a comp. I felt, I believe I saw it. I briefly saw it in the chat, but I can't find that, that comment anymore. But but guys, Haley Van Liff is five foot seven. Um, Kelsey Mitchell, who is a really really good shooting guard in the WNBA, she's five foot eight. So so while yes, while height is important and and, and it's and it's good to be a you know five foot eleven and above shooting guard, you you can make it being a shorter shooting guard if you're really really good at that role. Um. So, so yeah, I, I, that, that's what I'd say. It, it, it is, it is absolutely, absolutely possible for, um, for Haley to make it as a shooting guard in the WNBA at five foot seven. It's, it's going to be difficult, but she can do it. Uh, Caitlin says, do you think, uh, Haley Cavender decommitting to TCU has anything to do with Haley Van Liff? Um, Haley Van Liff and, uh, Haley Cavender together would have been nice. I don't actually think it has anything to do with, um, Haley Cavender decommitting for a hot second, um, before it was announced that, uh, Haley Cavender was decommitting uh, from TCU, which we'll talk about, uh, actually let's just, let's just quickly talk about, uh, about, uh, Haley Cavender real quick. Uh, and then we'll continue on with, uh, with the future of TCU. So, uh, this comment is referring to the fact that Haley Cavender initially, tr initially, um, she committed to TCU. So in November of 2023, um, Haley Cavender said that she was committed to TCU. Um, and if you were, if you all remember in the summer of last year, uh, both, uh, Haley and her sister, Hannah, uh, who both played at, at, at Miami, um, both of them decided to not go for their final year of college and they decided to um, leave college and go uh, become pro wrestlers. They, they were, they were with, they were with the, the WWE, they were models, they did a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, so they decided to do that instead of return back to, to, to school. But then um, as the season started, 
um, Haley Cavender was having second thoughts. She's having second thoughts about, about transferring, uh, or no, not about transferring. She, she was having second thoughts about, um, about leaving college for good. And then she was like, I want to come back. So she, in, she entered the transfer portal and then she committed to TCU. Now that was back in November. And up until then we were thinking, okay, Haley Cavender is going to TCU. But then her sister, Hannah, yesterday posted this on social saying, my last season of basketball was one of the most successful and challenging years of my life, uh, but it helped grow me immensely. The past few months, I have been itching to get back to the game that I thought I lost the passion for. With that being said, I am returning for one more season. All right, so she's returning uh, for, for one more season, and she decided to stay at Miami. So Haley's sister, Hannah, announced that she was returning back to Miami. Um, and a day later, Haley announces that she is decommitting from TCU and going back uh, to where it all started at Miami. Um, she said on social, given the news yesterday that my sister was returning to play basketball at Mi Miami and after careful consideration and thought, I've decided to return to the University of Miami and play with, Han with Hannah for our final and fifth season. There is nothing more important than family and the bond uh, I share with my twin sister. Being presented with the opportunity to play together one more time is something I cannot pass up. I'm excited for this upcoming season and cannot wait to play at the U. Okay, so that is that is the news, guys. Haley and, and Hannah Cavender are back. They're back in the NCAA. And, uh, yeah. Um, one of the things that, to note is that, you know, Haley for sure was uh, the, the better um, – twin in terms of just playing uh than her sister was uh so Haley is a Haley is a point guard um and when when you talk about her as a as a player she did her thing at Miami like she was she was really 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 where um she was really doing her thing <laughs> like truly truly um in her last season with uh with um, her last several seasons, she had, she averaged uh, 12 points a game in her, her last season at Miami. Um, the year before that she was averaging 19.8 points a game. Um, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where she, she's going, she's going, technically it's not back to where it started. Um, technically, uh, they both actually only played one season at Miami before they went to Miami. Uh, they were at Fresno state. Um, and that was a huge, a huge thing. Um, yeah, Robbie, you are absolutely right. Yes. Miami is not where they started. It's, I kind of say it's where it all began because it feels like that's where, um, the world like really started to know about the Cavender twins. It felt like when they went to Miami and there was a scandal about, um, them committing to the school and like, there was a whole thing about recruitment and whatnot. It felt like that was when people knew about the Cavender twins. Um, so that's kind of what I would say. Um, so yeah, Haley and, and Hannah are, are back. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, that is a, that is a thing. And because of that, because Haley Cavender has, um, decided to go back to Miami, I believe is where this decision was actually made. So um, Maddie, Maddie Schur, um, she posted this on uh, on social media uh, earlier today. She said, um, well, if you don't know, Maddie Schur um, uh, played at Kentucky this, this uh, past season. And um, after her coach got fired, um, she entered the transfer portal. And here's what she said earlier today. Uh, Maddie sure said, bluegrass girl for life. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to play for my home state with such an amazing community of support behind me. I have loved being part of this program and I am forever grateful 
for the relationships and memories made. I do not take for granted any moment I got to wear Kentucky in front of my jersey. With that being said, I am closing the chapter at my time at Kentucky. Thank you again for all the fans and the people who have helped along the way. Stay tuned for another announcement here soon. And that announcement came lickety split because right after that, it was announced that um, Maddie Sure is going to TCU. So I I believe that that um, Maddie Sure decided to go to TCU when Haley Cavender decided to go to Miami because Haley Cavender was going to be the starting point guard for TCU. Um, now that now that um, uh, Haley Cavender is now gone. Um, I believe that that's kind of when Maddie sure kind of decided, okay, yeah, I'm going to, uh, yep. I am, I am going to, um, to TCU and I'm going to be a, a point guard there. Um, so, so guys, if, if you don't know, here's, here's some stuff about, um, here's some stuff about Maddie sure. Uh, Maddie is a guard likely will be a point guard at, um, at TCU next season, uh, she's a guard, um, averaging, uh, uh, uh 12.5 points this past season, um, 3.4 assists. Uh, this is her final season in women's college basketball. Uh, so she's played four years already. This will be her, her, uh, fifth year, um, next season. And the reason why she also decided to go to TCU was because if y'all maybe if, if I'm not sure how many of y'all have heard, but initially, um, she was going to she in terms of Maddie sure was going to actually uh, visit Iowa. So maybe y'all have heard that already. She was going to visit Iowa, um, and she decided not to make that visit. And the reason why uh, Maddie did not make the visit to Iowa is because. Iowa now has all 15 of their roster spots um, because Lucy Olson, who will be their starting point guard next season has went, has decided to go to um, she decided to go to Iowa. So we're going to talk about Lucy Olson and what Iowa's was doing in just a sec, but that's kind of how Maddie sure has ended up at TCU. Um, she left Kentucky because her coach got fired um, she was going to visit Iowa, but because Lucy Olson is, is now committed to Iowa, Maddie sure decided to go to TCU. So that's kind of how all that has gone. Um, guys, if y'all could hit that like button, that would be pretty fantastic. We got 500 people in the chat, um, but we don't actually have that many likes. So if y'all get that like button, that would be great. And also if y'all know a, a basketball, a women's basketball fan, uh, let them know to tune in to watch the stream. All right, let's continue on. And guys, a, a thing to note, a thing to note is that, um, yes, JT, you are absolutely right. Um, where is that comment? JT says, Maddie Sher already has ties with Coach Campbell uh, from when he recruited her to Oregon. Yes, um, Coach uh, Mark Campbell, who is the current head coach of um, TCU, he's from Oregon. And uh, I, I kind of call um, TCU as uh, Oregon 2.0 because he's brought, you know, some, some Oregon players. And Maddie Sher played her first two seasons at Oregon. Um, then she decided to leave when, um, when her coach left uh, to, to, go to, to go to TCU. Maddie Sher left Oregon and went to Kentucky. She played at Kentucky for two seasons. Um, now she is going back to her, her former coach um, and, is, and is going to play at TCU. All right, so uh, it all kind of starts with uh, this guy right here. His name is Mark Campbell, and he is leading a renaissance at TCU. Before, no one cared about TCU. No one cared. When it came, when it came to women's basketball, no one cared about the Horned Frogs of TCU. Uh, but... With the decision that TCU made in hiring coach Mark Campbell, things started to change for this program. Um, things things started to change. You saw you saw players 
wanting to actually go to TCU, a program that is not known for women's basketball at all. Um, you, you, you saw people deciding to go to TCU. Uh, he was hired. Uh, coach Mark Campbell was hired uh, as the head coach of TCU in um, on a he was hired on on March the twenty first, twenty twenty three, and this was this was a, a a huge a huge move. He'd had a very very successful time in Oregon, um, and he's been known for recruiting top talent. If if you remember, you know Sabrina Sabrina Ionescu played at Oregon. Ruthie Hebert played at Oregon. Other like other big time players um, played at Oregon, and they decided to go there because Coach Mark Campbell recruited them. Um, and the team before Coach Mark Campbell took over TCU was so bad. TCU was so bad at women's basketball that they had a record of um or. TC yeah TC just wasn't good. They just they just were not a, a not a, a really good team at all. Um, but with Mark Campbell joining the squad, um, they rebounded this year a little bit. Uh, though they did incur a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries this past season. If y'all remember, I, I made a previous video about TCU and how they were they were offering um, they were recruiting players uh, to 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 join their team because they had so, so, so many injuries that they couldn't feel the team. Um, so TCU has gone through a quite a bit, uh, but they are on a resurgence back and it's going to be pretty interesting to see how, uh, how they continue from here. But yeah, they have gotten a lot of really good recruits uh, to join their program. They had Jaden Owens. Um, she, was injured this season, so so didn't get to uh, fully play the entire season. You have Sedona Prince, who has said that she is returning to TCU uh, next season, um, and and so yeah, I I, th I think um, I think TCU is going to have a pretty pretty good year next season. I think they're going to have a pretty good year, and and again they are in the Big Twelve, so they're they're going to have an opportunity to sort of lead the charge when it comes to the Big Twelve next season because you have. Maddie Shear at the point. You have Haley Van Liff, who will be the shooting guard uh, for, for, for the Horned Frogs next year. Um, you have Sedona, Sedona Prince, you know, the, the, the lady in the middle. Um, you have Madison Connor, who likely will be the small forward. I, I, I feel like she'd probably, she's probably, probably going to play that role. Um, Madison Connor has been, you know, really, really good for this program. Uh, this past season, uh, she, she's kind of done a lot <laughs> for, for this program. Like she's, she's averaged 19.2 points a game this past year. Um, she was very consistent, uh, for, for them, uh, in a year where lots of players were having injuries. Um, she was able to step up and make some stuff happen for C TCU. So you do have four really good players that are going to be in start your starting lineup, uh, for next season. Again, Madison Connor. Sedona Prince, Haley Van Liff, and Maddie Schur. And Mark Campbell is building something very, very, very special. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, Christopher says Oregon State had a had a number one recruiting cl class with, yeah, with uh, Schur, uh, Pow Pow, and, uh, and others. Yeah, but... You know, um, partially uh, them losing that is, is is also because of Mark Campbell leaving, um, and 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 going to TCU. And and guys, uh, there was a mention of Pow Pow, and Pow Pow actually uh, posted on um, on Twitter earlier today. Somebody somebody asked on on Twitter. They said, "What is what is it at TCU? Uh, seems uh, seems like they're that they, seems like they have something everybody wants. Fill me in." So somebody was asking, like, like, why is everybody going to TCU? Like, what's going on? And Tahina Pow Pow said they got the best peoples in the business for real. So 
I mean, I I, I take that as, as pretty much fact with that that um you have Tahina Pow Pow um you know singing the praises of Mark Campbell and his program uh, because you know she was a part of that. You know, when Mark Campbell was at Oregon, that's who that's who Tahina Pow Pow played for. And she knows about how they operate and whatnot. And, and she's like, yeah, they're, they're a great, a great program. Um, and they pr- basically brought Oregon to TCU uh, in terms of their structure and how they do stuff and whatnot. Um, so I think that's just like huge praise. I think that is huge, huge praise to have um, a, a former player of yours, uh, you know, just be like, Hey, yeah. They got the best people in the business, you know. I think that that's really, really huge praise. Uh, we got some super chats. Let me get to those. Um, Travis, thank you so much for the super chat. Travis said, uh, "Welcome to uh, welcome to the Frog uh, Funky Town, Haley Van Lift. Go Frogs!" Um, thank you, cute. Well, thank thank you, Travis. Appreciate you. Um, and uh, Travis gave another uh, super chat saying, happy frogs. Um, all right. So so uh, clearly, Travis is a huge Horn Frogs fan. Uh, but thank you, Travis, for the super chats. Uh, Kaylin says, does Haley Van Liff have to sit out since it's her second transfer? No, she does not. Um, the reason why is because the NCAA was sued. Uh, about the the rule about um, uh, if you're if you're transferring for a second time having to sit out, uh, so so yeah, they they are not enforcing a those transfer rules right now because the NCAA was sued. They're going to change the rule. Um, so so yeah, she does not have to sit out. She does not. So she will be playing next season. That's a really good question though. Um, let's see, let's see. I see some chat about Reagan Beers to South Carolina. I haven't heard anything of that. Like I've I've heard fans talking about Reagan Beers going to um to uh South Carolina, but I have not actually seen that. I have not actually seen that. So yeah. Um, CAC, I am actually not sure. Um, I could look that up for you. I am not sure though, CAC. Um, some, some of the players who did not get drafted, some of them were, uh, were picked up, uh, on a training cap roster. So for example, Jalen Sherrod was one of those players. Jalen Sherrod, who played at Colorado was not, um, was not drafted on Monday. Uh, but she did, she did end up, um, of signing a, a training camp contract with the uh, New York Liberty. I am not sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure about uh, the twins and what's and what's happening on, on their on their side. Uh, but I can look. I can look that up though. CAC. All right. All right. All right. Okay, so yeah, that, I, I did just want to let y'all know what's happening at TCU. TCU is building something very nice. Will TCU be uh, like a, a really, really top school next season? Um, they will be big in the Big 12. They were big in the Big 12 until they got injured this year. Um, but yeah, they're going to be pretty big in the Big 12. Um, and, and we're going to see, my prediction is that we're going to see um, – Haley Van Liff get back to the um, the 19 points a game type of player. Um, she's gonna she again she hasn't improved. She's improved in terms of passing, uh, but but she's gonna get back to that shoot first mentality. Um, she's not gonna be thinking, oh, should I pass? Should I should I shoot? Uh, she's gonna be a shoot first uh, player. She's gonna score a lot of points for this team uh, next season. Um, and she's going to have a good year. She's going to have a very, very good year, in my opinion. So, so this past year, um, TCU was twenty-one and twelve on the season, and they really were killing uh, for most of the season. Um, guys, they were undefeated. This TCU team was undefeated uh, for 
until until January. They were undefeated until January. Um, January they got they got their first loss against Baylor. Started to have a lot of injuries and then went on a huge skid, losing losing quite a few games. But but again, injuries did um, did become a factor in in, in a lot of those uh, those games for TCU. Um, Classless says, did Gabby Marshall get picked up? No, no, she did not get picked up. Uh, Gabby Marshall is going to graduate school, um, at the University of North Carolina. She's going for occupational therapy. I believe that's, that's the name of, of what she's, uh, the, the program that she's getting into. Um, so yeah, she, she did, she's not playing basketball anymore. She's not playing basketball anymore. Uh, Travis says the big 12, uh, will only get tougher. Yeah, they are going to get tougher, but I also think that TCU is, is going to be, um, better. Uh, so, so they're going to, they're going to do well. They're going to, they're going to do well. Uh, but yes, the big 12 is going to look very, 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 very different next season. SC scout guy says she doesn't have any eligibility left. Who, who doesn't have any? Oh, for Gabby Marshall, yeah, Gabby Marshall, yeah, Gabby Marshall is all out of, out of eligibility, and she is going to graduate school. Uh, Galen says, "Do all uh, the walk-ons just get a thanks and then forgotten about a TCU?" Yep, yeah, basically. Basically. <laughs> uh, Thane says Reagan Beers is going to South Carolina the same way Sarah Strong did <laughs> that is funny that is funny that is <laughs> that is funny <laughs> that is funny uh, Tin says what do you think about Stanford's future uh, it's not going to be great uh, it's not going to be great because uh, they're their their best their best player um their best player was a uh, was um is has decided to enter the transfer portal so Kiki Irafin if you did not know has entered the transfer portal we don't know where she's going just yet but she has entered the transfer portal so that is something huge to know yeah um yeah that yeah I I, I don't I don't know about her twin um I I don't know about her twin. Uh, Frank is going to be uphill battle. It's going to be a huge uphill battle for her to make that roster. Huge uphill battle. But you know, uh, Kate Kate Martin is Kate Martin is scrappy. She going she going to do her best. She going to do her best. Absolutely, absolutely do her best. Um. All right, let's continue on. Let's continue on. Uh, Goodness Ready says she's going to Iowa. Kiki, uh, if you mean Kiki or Offen going to Iowa, she can't. Uh, Iowa already has all fifteen of their players. They don't have a they don't have a spot unless unless someone transfers or something happens. Uh, Iowa Iowa is all out of spots, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about Iowa and the roster spots that they have in just a sec. But they're out of, all out of spots, so she can't go there. Unless someone transfers, unless someone transfers or someone decommits or something like that, uh, she doesn't have a spot. Um, I saw a comment that I was going to uh, answer, but I can't find it anymore. I saw someone, someone made a uh, made a, a comment about Talia Scott, and I can't find the comment. Um, so whoever you were that made that comment about Talia Scott, um, thank you for saying, thank you for, uh, for mentioning that. Um, because yeah, let's, let's talk about, and I do apologize. I don't have a graphic for this. Um, cause I actually forgot to make one about Talia Scott. So Talia Scott, uh, the, the fantastic, fantastic, uh, freshman, um, this past, this past year, uh, she played at Arkansas. She was beasting when it came, like when it came to just scoring. Um, she had twenty two. She averaged twenty two points uh, per game this past season. Uh, she was on the All SEC team. You know, she she did her thing. You know, she shot pretty efficiently, shooting 40 percent from the field, 
Um, and she decided to transfer from Arkansas and she has decided to stay in the SEC and go to Auburn. So Auburn now has an amazing, an amazing player in, um, in Talia Scott. So, so Talia Scott, I, I would personally say that I was kind of surprised that Talia Scott chose Auburn. Like I, like I have to say, I, I was, I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked a little bit by that because I was expecting Talia Scott to go to one of the, one of the, the bigger, like, like huge, huge name brand women's basketball program. Like I was, I thought that, um, she was going to go, go somewhere like that. And I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome for the game of women's basketball that she didn't. I think it's awesome that she decided to, to, uh, go to a, a program like, um, like Auburn. And, and, and also I specifically want to call out, um, I specifically want to call out, uh, what she said. Uh, goodness ready says, who is Talia Scott? Well, here, let me, let me, um, let me actually, let me pull up a graphic of her. So y'all can know um, what she looks like, but y'all, and I, I, I do kind of regret. Um, I do kind of regret not talking about Talia Scott as much as I should have this past season because she, she really has been balling, like balling, balling, balling. We talk about some great, um, we talk about some great freshmen this past season. Um, Juju, Hannah. You know, Malaysia, um, lots of other players, but but y'all, um, Talia Scott was a beast, man. She was a straight up beast this season. Um, and I and I do wanna I do wanna um, pull up a uh, pull up a photo of her so y'all know what she looks like. And we gonna we gonna talk about her decision. We're gonna talk about her decision to uh, go to. Auburn after leaving uh, Arkansas. All right, so here is Miss Talia Scott. Um, she is, well, not anymore. She was a, a freshman. Um, she's a guard. And Talia Scott is, she's, she's one of the best, freshman in the sec for sure of course she did make the sec um the the all sec all sec uh freshman team if if uh arkansas was actually uh, like really good this season she would have been the freshman of the year for the sec but they weren't good so that's why she you know didn't uh she she decided not to uh i mean she didn't she didn't decide that's that's why the sec decided not to actually um uh give her the honor of the freshman of the year, but, but she really has been dominating for her program. Um, and I do want to specifically call out a quote, uh, that Talia Scott gave. Um, so here's, here we go. Here's a quote that she, uh, gave after the announcement was made about her going to Auburn. She says, um, she said, I chose Auburn not only because of the coaching staff's ability to help develop me and get me to where I want to be, but also because of the family environment within the team and the entire community. I wanted to be surrounded by winners, and that's what Auburn has from the administration to the coaches and staff to the players. Auburn has everything I need to thrive and to be the best version of myself. So that is what she said after she signed um, with Auburn. And she also said something that I thought was very, very like eye opening to the, to her decision to uh, actually go to Auburn instead of going to a a more uh, I would say name brand school per se. And here's here's what she said. I, th I thought it was I thought it was very like hmm that's very interesting. Here's what she said. She said. Um, I want to help elevate a program, not join an established one. We got something special in the making. So that's what she said. And to be honest with you, I, w I was shocked. I was 
I was I was really really shocked um, that she decided to go to Auburn instead of going to another program. But you know, shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Johnny Harris and what she is doing, Coach Johnny Harris and what she's doing at um, at Auburn. Um, and we'll see we'll see how 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 uh, how they do next season. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, MB Wells says NIL money. Um, you think so? I mean, I feel like the, the, it's, it's probably the same, the, you know, the, the amount of NIL, NIL money at Arkansas and, um, and, um, uh, Auburn is probably the same, I think. All right, so yeah, that is that is uh, Talia Scott. All right, let's continue on. Let's continue on. I do want to talk about. Um, I do want to talk about Iowa. So Iowa just added a huge, huge huge transfer. So, let's 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 uh let's spend the let's spend um, you know, the next several minutes talking about Iowa. So, this Iowa program is a program that has been on the change um since since the uh season has officially ended. This is a program that had some huge players in um and Caitlin Clark, most notably, you had Kate Martin, you had Gabby Marshall, three of your three of your your um, your starters who played for the most part forty minutes a game with uh, with Iowa. They're all gone, <laughs> you know. They are they are all gone. And when you look at when you look at this Iowa team it's going to look very different. It, it is going to look very, very different. Um, and they added a huge, huge player, one of the best scorers in the country in Lucy Olson. So if y'all don't know, uh, Lucy, Lucy Olson plays for, or played for Villanova, um, and when you talk about a player who can, um, who can shoot, absolutely. Caitlin Clark is one of the, one of the lights out, um, one of the lights out, lights out shooters in the country. But did you know third in scoring for the NCAA was Lucy Olson? Lucy Olson is going to be, um, a, a senior uh, next season, she has averaged 23.3 points a game, um, 4.8 rebounds a game, 3.8 assists per game. And guys, you cannot sleep on Iowa because uh, Lisa Bluter was like, yeah, I know. I just lost a generational talent. I just I just lost a generational talent. But, but don't worry, Iowa still is going to be very good because – Iowa is now a team of shooters. They are now a team of shooters. And with a player like Lucy Olsen, they're going to be very good. So Lucy Olsen is coming in as, um, as the starting point guard for Iowa. Um, I anticipate her to be the starting point guard from Iowa um, next season. And she's gonna be very, she's gonna be very 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 good. So so in terms of in terms of what she's done this season, yes, I talked about you know her her averaging you know twenty three points a game, which was like a huge jump. So when we when we talk about when we talk about players developing over the years, um, we we've seen it in Kiki Irafin. We saw Kiki Irafin uh, go from a okay sometimes get in the game role player into a dominant player um, like she was this past season. Same thing for a player like Lucy Olsen. Lucy Olsen 
Um, you know, last last season, uh, meaning in the 2022-2023 season, um, Lucy was all right. She was all right. You know, she she started every game uh, that that she played last season. She averaged 12 points a game. So she was she was okay. She did her job as a starter. Um, but over the summer, she she worked on her craft and she started putting up buckets. She started she started putting up buckets. And she goes from 12.4 points a game to 23.3 points a game. So huge difference in terms of uh, year over year transformation for um, for Lucy Olson. Now the question that you may be wondering is, okay, Lucy Lucy Olson for sure we know is a scorer, but is she Caitlin Clark? No, Lucy Olson is not Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is a generational talent, one that we may not see for a long time. Though you have Hannah Hidalgo and you have Juju Watkins um, right there. So, you know, uh, that is something. Um, but but Lucy Olsen is not, is not Caitlin Clark. She's not. But she is a, she's a straight up scorer. She's a straight up scorer. Um, and I don't believe that her or Lisa Bluter or anybody else at Iowa expects Lucy Olsen to be like Caitlin Clark. She's not her. She's Lucy. She's not Caitlin. And so I think it's important for um for for fans as you're as you as you're looking at Iowa, as you're talking about Iowa, it's important to to just keep in mind that like this is not um Iowa was not only Caitlin Clark. Uh, Iowa has been a has has been a factor you know, for, for a long time when it came to women's basketball, you know, you can go back to the C Vivian Stringer days. Um, and then, and then you have more recently, you have Megan Gustafson, right? You had Caitlin Clark in her er era. And this team is sort of morphing into a shooting team. Like it's, it's, it's a shooting team that, that I feel like for years to come is probably going to be dominated by guards. Yes. They're going to have really good bigs. They have Monica Sinano. Uh, they now have Hannah, um, Stokey, uh, as a big, but it seems like the, the, the bread and butter for Iowa going forward will be a guard that can score. And that's what they bring in. They bring in Lucy Olsen, who can score. She is not Caitlin Clark. She's not supposed to be Caitlin Clark. Don't expect her to do what Caitlin Clark did. She, she, that's that's not what she. That's not that's not who she is. She's Lucy Olsen, and Lucy can score. Um, she's going to have to work on uh, being consistent, especially around uh, around top teams. That's something that um, I think for sure is going to be. Uh, uh, something that's that's like circled and underlined because um, while Lucy Olson has been fantastic um, this season, she has struggled against some of the top teams in the country. When um, UConn played, uh, when UConn played uh, Villanova in in February, Lucy Olson struggled. She only had six points in that game, and she shot horribly from the field, only 12% from the field in that game. Uh, so, so that's something that she's going to work on um, as she, as she goes to Iowa, she's going to have to work on her consistency, uh, not just, uh, you know, getting 30, 30 points against Providence, but also when you're playing against a team like a UConn um, showing up and, and being able to being able to uh, make some noise in those games as well. So that's something that she's going to have to work on. And I think she will, I think she really will. As, as time goes on. But guys, I do want to talk about um, Iowa a little bit more because they do have all 15 of their, their spots already set. Um, so that's why, um, so folks in the chat were saying about Kiki Eroff and possibly going to, um, uh, possibly, possibly going to um, uh, Iowa. She's not going to Iowa because Iowa has all 15 of their scholarship uh, players are already set. So um, Iowa is bringing in a lot of freshmen, a lot. All right. So when you when you look at this Iowa team going forward, 
Um, you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be talking about freshmen largely. You're gonna largely be talking about freshmen, and that's because these next couple of classes they're bringing in quite a few freshmen. All right, so let's let's look at the let's look at the uh, future of Iowa next season. So Iowa is bringing in Aaliyah Gunton, uh, freshman, Callie Levin, Tegan. Um, and I do apologize. I, I'm really bad at pronouncing last names. Um, we have Tegan. Um, uh, actually here, let me, actually, let me just, I am going to, I am going to, uh, grab those names and just post them right on the screen so y'all can see them. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So here, here are, here are the players who are playing for Iowa next season. So again, uh, you have Ava, uh, freshman Ava Heaton. Uh, Taylor Strimlo, Tegan Malagini, um, Callie Levin, Aaliyah, Gun Aaliyah Guyton. Uh, you have Ava Jones, who was a redshirt freshman. Um, you have sophomores, uh, Kenise Johnson, juniors, Taylor McCabe, Jada Gamphy, and Hannah Stokey. And then next season, you'll also have uh, Lucy Olson, who just transferred in, uh, Sydney Falter. Kylie Fearbach, AJ Edinger, and Addison O'Grady. So those are the players who will be on Iowa's roster next season. Um, they do have a full slate of players. So they're they're unless someone transfers from Iowa, Iowa's not getting any other players. Okay. All right. Hopefully that is helpful. So unless someone transfers, they're not getting any other players. Uh, they do have uh, some some more. Uh, incoming freshmen that are be, that are that will be coming in in the 2025 season as well. All right. So so those are those are the players for Iowa next season that y'all can look forward to. Uh, JB says Lucy is a really nice pickup for Iowa, but I'm still a little skeptical. Iowa also lost Gabby, uh, Kate and Molly Davis. Yep, yep, not just Clark relying on a lot of freshmen. Uh, so I have to see it first. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th and I think they're not going to solely rely on the freshman, right? Cause you, you know, you bring in, you got Lucy Olson, um, Sydney F. Alter, Kylie Fearbach, you know, uh, Hannah Stokey are going to be the leaders of this team next season. And they're going to, they're going to try to try to see what they can do. They're going to try to see what they can do. Uh, Michaela says, I think Sydney is going, uh, to take a big jump next year. Yeah. She, yeah, she is. Yeah. She, she, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I think Sydney Falter, uh, has a lot of talent. I think, I think Sydney Falter is going to have a good season next season. Also, we're going to see Hannah Stokey take e even another leap as a player. Um, so, so yeah, I think, uh, I think I think Iowa's going to be pretty good next year. Uh, they're not going to be scrubs. They're not going to be scrubs. They're gonna they're gonna make the tournament. Um, you know I, I don't know how far they'll make it in the tournament, um, but I think they'll make the especially especially grabbing a player like Lucy Olson, um, a player who can who can just put up buckets. I think uh, I think they're going to be pretty good next year. Um, now will they be at the top of the Big Ten? I don't know. I think I think they make the tournament, but. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure uh, how how good they will be in the in the Big Ten. Maybe they're top three, maybe top four in the Big Ten. Um, but yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. They do have Addison Dell in uh, in um, 2025. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got folks giving their praises to Sydney at Falter. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I haven't seen any news yet. The men, the men, uh, the the USA's uh, men's national team, uh, they did announce their Olympic roster. I don't think the women have yet. If they did, I haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, guys, that's that's kind of the news I, I wanted to really talk about. Um. Uh, that that's a uh, that's the uh, transfer news I want to talk about. But also, 
if y'all are curious, if y'all do want to know, it's just sort of like daily, like what's happening in the transfer portal, who's going where, like what's happening. There is a resource that I, I do want to share with you. Uh, it's from the next hoops. Um, next hoops are like, it's a great website when, when, when you're talking about, and, and guys, I, I, I am still going to make that video, um, about, uh, trusted sources that y'all can follow when it comes to women's basketball, like where you should, where, who y'all should be listening to. Um, but, but one of, one of the, um, one of the groups of people that I, I highly recommend is the next, the next, the next hoops. Um, they're a great news, a news, um, a news place. And, uh, they actually have a tracker I'm putting in the, in the chat right now. They have a tracker for the portal. So if y'all are just curious, like on a day-to-day -day basis, if y'all are curious about, um, you know, who's going where, uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend the next. Um, they put out some great, great news uh, when it comes to women's basketball. Uh, they are very accurate. Um, so you can, they're, they're one of the people that you can for sure count on when you need to, uh, when, when you need to, when you need to, when you need to know about what's happening when it comes to women's basketball. Um, you know, absolutely. I want y'all to rock with me. Um, uh, but I am not the only game in town. So if y'all are, y'all do want a written material uh, about, uh, just news and information about women's basketball, I highly recommend the next. There's lots of other places I do recommend as well. Um, but the next is one of those. Um, uh, thank you so much, MB, MB well. Uh, I, I do appreciate that. Um, I do appreciate that. Yeah, Travis. Uh, yeah, the people at the next hoops provide great coverage on women's basketball. They do. They do. They do. I don't, I don't think they get a, like, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think a lot of people talk about them, um, but I know for sure a lot of people get their information from the next. Um, I know I do. I do. When I am uh, fact checking information, um, I go to a lot of sources, and one of those is uh, is the next. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, guys, we have finished the main stuff I wanted to talk about. So now I'm open. So if y'all have like a specific thing y'all want to talk about, um, we can we can talk about that now. So we we talked about the main thing, which was the transfer portal and some of the recent changes that were made. Um, in, in terms of who was going where. Um, so, so yeah. Um, let's see, let's see what questions do you all have? Um, what comments do y'all have about just anything? Um, Aiden is asking, do you think Angel and Camilla could leave the sky in the future because they don't like the practice facility? Yes, yes. Which is why I think I think this is the best. The fact that the Sky have both Angel and Camilla, I think this is going to be huge for the Sky's bottom line in general. One because they have two of the best players um, in the in the in the college game that are that are leaving the college game. Um, two because Angel Reese is immensely popular. Um, and three because that's going to bring in revenue. Um, now now guys. Uh, I have had lots of people ask me for tickets. I I have had people saying they're trying to get tickets, but tickets are super expensive for for the Sky Games now um, because people are buying them up. I have seen where I even reached out to my rep because um, so many people have been asking me for tickets. I was like, oh, is there? I was asking like, hey, is there any more tickets on my row? And he's like, no, or there's no more tickets on your row. You got you. The next seats are like way up you know, higher than your row. And so I was, I was actually going to buy, I have two tickets to every game. I was actually going to buy a, uh, like two more pairs of tickets. Um, but, but it's nowhere near close to actually where I sit. So I was like, ah, forget it. Those people who want, who want tickets from me, <laughs> all my coworkers and whatnot, they're trying to buy their own tickets. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, because, because the sky is going to, uh, make a lot of money this season through, through Jersey sales, through, um, just ticket revenue, I believe we are going to be able to step up the timeline to leave. Uh, right now we play at, um, we play at a, a recreational facility in Deerfield. I say we, like I'm a part of the team. I'm not. Um, but, but the, the sky, the sky, they practice at a practice facility in Deerfield. Um, and I believe it's called Saks recreation facility. Um, and you know, they, they, they put the logo on the court. And so it kind of, 
kind of feels like it's it's the sky's home uh, for practicing, but but it's a it's a recreation facility. Like it's it's where lots of people go to 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 work out and exercise and whatnot. And, and then you have a professional basketball team that's there practicing. Like it's not a it's not a good look, right? It's not a, it's not a good look. And um and the sky do need a practice facility, guys. I don't know if y'all saw this, but but the uh, the Seattle Storm actually just created a fantastic, absolutely fantastic um, uh, facility. They just created it, and it looks really awesome. And when we when we're talking about when we're talking about teams uh, teams becoming destinations, that's what you need. So the Las Vegas Aces is a place to be. Absolutely a place to be. Um, we talk about uh, the Seattle Storm being a place to be. And the reason why is because of their facilities. That's why. The Las Vegas Aces built their own facility. They have their own practice space that is theirs where they can put the stuff, their stuff in their lockers and no one's taking it. it they don't have to take anything out. It's theirs. The Seattle, the Seattle Storm... Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the video in just a sec, but uh, the Seattle Storm just announced and showed video of their facility, and it is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And you and you and and that's that's why that's why you have Skylar Diggins Smith. That's why you have Neka Agumake. That's why you have Jewel Lloyd opting for um, Seattle. They have their own space where the players can feel like it is their home, where they can feel like, okay, I can practice any time of day. If I if I want if I want to practice um, if I want to practice at nine p.m., I can practice. I don't have to worry about it. If I if I want to practice at uh, at seven a.m., I can I can I can go there. I have a key card. It works, and I can go in and practice. Um, that's not the case for teams like Chicago and others. That's not the case, you know? And as we, as we look into the future, these, these, uh, these teams have to be able to compete. You have to be able to compete. And the, and the only way you can compete is if you have a similar facility structure. You need to be able to have something that players are like, ooh, I actually, I actually want to go there. And so, yeah, um, the re you know, practice facilities was a re was part of a reason as to why Candace left. And it's going to be a reason as to why more people leave. Guys, look at the look at the look at the video of look at the video of um of the Seattle Storms facilities. Look at this. It looks phenomenal. And this is all theirs. This is all theirs. And of course, you know, Starbucks uh, probably probably gave them a lot of money to sponsor it. Own workout. They got their own workout stuff. Look at their locker rooms. They got a pool. Like, this is what you need. This is top-notch stuff that you need to make players want to go there because the, at the end of the day, uh, Seattle cannot offer any more money than the sky can. They can't offer any more money than Phoenix, than New York, than Minnesota. The salary cap is the salary cap guys. You know, it is what it is. But when you have things like this, when you have, uh, an opportunity for 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 not just a uh, a payday for these players because they can get the payday anywhere um, in terms of any team because the salary cap is the same all, all throughout the league. Um, the difference is they have a dedicated practice facility that they feel like is there, so they can go anytime they want. They have um, a, a workout room that is top notch. They have a plunge pool. They have a guarantee. They have like ice, like uh, ice bath machines. They have so much stuff. Um, 
that it just it, it puts Seattle over over the art. Like it, it puts Seattle over other other programs, like a Chicago Sky. I guarantee you, if the Chicago had uh, these types of facilities, we would have had free agents, top notch free agents, going with the Chicago Sky. You know, when, when you talk about um, NECA and um, and uh, Skylar Diggins-Smith deciding to go to Seattle, sure, absolutely, they want they want to go. They 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 want to you know play with Jewel Lloyd and Jewel Lloyd's awesome and whatnot. But also, <laughs> it's the facilities that Seattle has. You know, yes, Noel Quinn is a fan is is a really good coach, and they want to play for her. But also, it's the facilities. The facilities is what takes it over, over. You know, it, it takes it overboard, and it, and it makes players be like, actually, yeah, I want to play there. Because guys, remember when after after Candace signed with Las Vegas Aces, she said she made a comment. She was like, oh, it's so wonderful to have my own uh, my own locker room for the first time ever. I have my own locker room, and it's mine. Guys, Candace Parker said that. After playing with the Sparks and after playing with the Sky, like it's 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 a it's a thing, guys, and um and teams have to step up. The Chicago Sky has to step up because if they don't, when Angel Reese is able to leave and when she's a free agent, when um you know uh, Camila Cardozo and other players are, are uh, up for free agency, they're going to leave and go to other places. You have to be able to compete. You have to. And um, I, you know, I hope that the Chicago Sky ownership is, uh, is looking to do that. Um, they say they are, but guys, they have been saying that for a while and we have not seen action. And so I am very much looking forward to seeing the Chicago Sky announce a groundbreaking or something soon. Um, so yeah, I did just want to talk about that uh, real quick. Um, Kelsey says it's crazy how programs ignore the value of a facility. Yeah, it's important. It is. It, it's one of those intangibles uh, that moves the needle for your program. It moves the needle. Uh, Michael says, I think you'll see a lot. Uh, I think you'll see all of these W teams le leveling up with the momentum um, and dollars eventually coming into the game now. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, Next Air says, the sky is under uh, new ownership. Um, well, they're not under new ownership. They more More people have joined the ownership group. But the main owners that were there before are still there. Um, Michael Alter, uh, John Rogers, and others uh, who are really, really great uh, for the city of Chicago. Um, uh, those, those, those folks, they're, they're still there uh, for this guy, um, but they added more people to the ownership group. Um, so that's great. Um, so yeah, the, this guy does have the money to do it. Um, they just have to get it done. Um, but guys, I, I do want to show y'all something though. I do want to show y'all. I, I do, I do want to show y'all something, um, that I think is pretty, is pretty important. Uh, so I, I want to show y'all where the Chicago Sky plays, uh, where they practice it. All right. I want to show you where the Chicago Sky practices and where the arena is. All right. All 
All right, so let's let's actually let's go let's go here. Okay, so here here guys, this is the website of Saks Recreation Center. Uh, this is where the Chicago Sky practice, and you can see, um, you know, uh, they uh, Saks Recreation Center has been the practice facility of the Sky for over ten years. So. The Chicago Sky, a professional basketball team, uh, they have been practicing at Saks Re Recreation Center for over 10 years. Um, and this is where they practice. This is where they this is where they have all their practices at uh, at this recreation center. Uh, and and Saks Recreation Recreation Center is, is you know it's it's a nice recreation center. It, it really is. Um, they they have a big space. It's in Deerfield. You know it's part of the Deerfield Park. Um, um, and you can see, you know, they were awarded the Illinois Association's Park District's Best uh, best of the Best Partnership Award in 2018. Uh, to, uh, yeah, and so this is, this is their, uh, yeah, this is, this is their thing. And so I'm not sure how, how well y'all can read this. I do apologize. I can probably make it a little bit bigger uh, for y'all to read it. But, uh, but yeah. So it says uh, the unique partnership between the WNBA, uh, Chicago Sky, and the Deerfield Park District um, began in 2011 when a portion of the Saks Recreation Center became the Sky's practice facility. All right. And guys, y'all y'all not going to get this anywhere else. So because I, I, I know all about this, we, we, I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to actually show y'all where they practice at. Um, because I think it's important. I think I think I think it's very important for us to see it. Um, so that way, once they actually decide to develop their own facility, that would be fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, this. So so yeah, that is uh, that is what they what they have done. And through that partnership, they've been able to do lots of different things: uh, small business growth workshops, team meeting greets, all that good stuff. And uh, here's some here's some photos of. Uh, of the players practicing at the at the facility, but yeah, that's uh that's that's what they that's what they're doing. But yeah, this is where the Chicago Sky practices at Saks Recreation Center. And if y'all are curious as to where this is from Wintrust Arena, all right. So so um so here is Saks Recreation Center in Deerfield. So if y'all are if y'all are actually curious, um, this is outside of the city of Chicago. So Chicago is down here. Chicago is down here, and then you, uh, and then like it's like it's like kind of like here. Rogers Park is like the edge of the city of Chicago, and then you go into Evanston, Wilmette, and then you just keep going up, keep going Glencoe, keep going up. Now you're in um, uh, Deerfield. So this is where the Chicago Sky plays. All right, this is where they play. Uh, where they practice it, I should say. This is where they practice every day at. And um, when they go to when they have games, they play at Wintrust Arena. Uh, right now, uh, that that route is uh, 40, 46 minutes, uh, but that is that is over. That's about thirty miles away. So twenty eight point eight miles on the shorter route, but on the main route, it's it's uh, thirty two point eight miles away. So so yeah. So it's 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 kind of far. And, and a lot of the players, they don't live in the suburbs. They live in the city. So they live in a city and they have to drive to the drive to um, to Deerfield every day to practice. And then they have to go to games. Um, that's like right in the city. It's, it's a great it's a great location for 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 the games. Great location. Wintrust Arena is fantastic uh, for games. But a lot of the players live around here. And they have to go all the way up there to go to go to games. So yeah, it, it's it's a thing. It is it is absolutely a thing. And I, and I did just want to show y'all because as as other as other teams start to uh, as other teams start to um, uh, develop practice facilities and have their own stuff, it's important for the sky to eventually be able to do the same thing. All right. What's up, Team Monique? Team Monique says, I'm usually part of your replay crew. 
Oh, that's what y'all called? All right, replay crew. Um, but I have definitely been enjoying your videos and happy to be here live. Uh, hey, Quita. Hey, everyone. <laughs> What's, what's up? What's up? Uh, what's up, T Money? Thank you so much for joining. Um, but yeah, hopefully y'all are now informed about what's happening with the Chicago Sky and, and like what they are doing. Um, guys, if y'all hit that like button, uh, please hit that like button. That would be fantastic. You're not getting. Um, I, I don't know if anybody has 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 ever walked y'all through like what the like what the Chicago Sky's practice facility and like where it's at and and all that stuff. So if y'all are appreciating, if y'all are appreciating this. Uh, please let me know by hitting that like button. That would be fantastic. Our dog is right. Yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty good commute. It really is. It really is. Uh, CAC says facilities was a huge problem for the NWSL too. Yep. Yeah, it's not just the WNBA. And it's uh, just changing now. Patrick Mahomes owns part of a women's uh, soccer team in Kansas, and they built a new arena there. Yeah, yeah. They have a they have a really good they have really good facilities in Kansas. Uh Michael, thank you so much for the super chat. Michael says, not related to your storm rant, but can we address the fact that everyone expects the game to change overnight just because Caitlin Clark is in the league? Facilities, salaries, merch. Um, it'll come just not immediately. Facts. Okay, so here here is the thing, guys. Um, this is something that I have had quite a few colleagues talk to me about. Um, they're like, did you know that, that the WNBA, that the WNBA get, that doesn't get paid that much money? Did you know that Caitlin Clark is only making like $70,000 a year? Did you know that, you know, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And I'm just like, yeah, like I, 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 Michael, I completely agree with you. There is, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of people who are, who are like, this doesn't make any sense. They're not getting paid that much money. You, this needs to change ASAP. But like, the thing is the WNBA has not made a profit and this is going to be the, the first year I believe that the WNBA will make a profit. The reason why is because not just the Caitlin effect, the Angel Reese effect, you know, the, the Cameron Brink effect. Um, and we, we, we talk about, um, the game growing and whatnot, and that's very important. And, and I, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of new people who are just checking this out and they're outraged and they're posting it on Twitter. Like, um, like it was even on the view where, where, um, where I think Whoopi Goldberg was, was, was talking about it and it's, it's everywhere and people are seeming to be so outraged. And I'm just like, what? I, I'm just kind of like, what, what's going on guys? Have y'all never paid attention to, uh, to, to the WNBA ever before? And you think this is a brand new thing? Um, you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, when we, when we talk about, when we talk about the, um, the WNBA, the reason why the facilities are the way they are, uh, or not, not necessarily the facility. The reason why, the reason why, um, uh, the salary cap is what it is. And the reason why players get paid the, the way they do is because the WNBA has, um, has lots of, has, has some big fans. We are, we are, the, we are super fans of the WNBA. We want the WNBA to, to succeed, but at the end of the day, we know this, but other folks don't know this seemingly because they keep posting about it with outrage. Um, the WNBA does not make money. The WNBA doesn't. And these teams are not really making any money. Um, and the owners aren't really making any money. <laughs> um, so the idea that, um, the idea that, Caitlin Clark and Reese comes in the league and all of a sudden everything's supposed to change like that. It won't, it'll take a little bit of time, right? It'll, it'll take a little bit of time. Um, as the WNBA gets more and more money, then they can pay the players more. We can get to a point where, uh, you know, the, the number one draft pick in the WNBA is getting paid a hundred thousand dollars. We can get to that point. Um, but it'll take time. 
And people, I have seen people acting like Caitlin Clark is going to be starving on the street because she's getting paid about $70,000. And they're like, oh, this is, teachers get paid more than this and all this other stuff. Um, and people aren't realizing the fact that Caitlin Clark, this past season in college, Caitlin Clark made $0 uh, from Iowa. She made lots of money in NIL, but to actually pick up a basketball, um, she didn't make any money. In the WNBA, yes, she's she's not getting paid a ton, but she's getting paid seventy thousand. And then she also has uh, lots and lots of deals. Other than that, she is uh, she's making millions of dollars, so she'll she'll be fine. Um, but overall, I do agree. I do agree that, um, that we do need to, um, you know, uh, grow the salary of WNBA players, but it ultimately that's up to us as fans. That is up to us as fans to support with our dollars. That is up to us as fans to buy the jerseys, to, 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 um, uh, buy season tickets to games, to, to buy a WNBA league pass. It's up to us if we put the money into the WNBA, they're going to they're going to um, uh, pay the players more because they will have more to give. So yeah. Uh, Raven says I'm confused. You said that this guy has money for a practice facility, but that teams aren't making money. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, I do apologize for the for the confusion, but yeah, but those are those are both true though. Um, yeah, so so when when owners uh, join an ownership group, they pledge a certain amount of money. Um, so the sky, in the amount of money that that the sky ownership group has has pledged into into um, putting money in the pot for the for the sky, uh, they do have they do have have the money. Um, but as a as a general thing. For the most part, um, you're not necessarily becoming an owner of the WNBA uh, to to make a um, to make a profit day one. You know, you're, you're not you're not. It's gonna it's gonna take a while, but you're gonna reap the you're gonna reap the benefit. So we're gonna see this year. We're gonna see lots of teams in the WNBA making making quite a bit of money. And these ownership groups are going to be able to benefit from it. You're going to see they're they they're, they're going to they're going to take 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 some money home out of all the money that, that they've invested into growing this thing, growing this thing, growing this thing. Um, you're going to see it reap the rewards. Like when you look at when you look at uh, businesses in general, there's a lot of businesses that 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 don't actually make a profit. Um, but they're just growing, they're growing, they're growing, they're growing, investing, 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 and then um, they reap the harvest. And I think that's what the WNBA is on the cusp of doing. We're on the cusp of uh, reaping the harvest. I uh, got some more super chats. Thank you so much, Team Monique, for the super chat. Appreciate you. And Michael, thank you again, says, um, I just asked the people complaining about salaries, how many of them have purchased League Pass or Merch Crickets? Um, facts. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm we're going to probably quit this conversation. Okay. I have, there are so many people who they just complain about stuff and they're like, oh, they don't get paid anything. You know, um, uh, uh, this is sexism. This is blah, blah, blah. You know, all this stuff. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm just like, do you even watch the WNBA? Have you ever bought anything, uh, for, for the WNBA? Um, if you were, a, if you were a celebrity, have you ever paid for your own ticket at a WNBA game, as opposed to getting free merch um, to to rep it, or 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 getting um, or uh, getting um, uh, uh, free tickets to games, have you ever actually bought anything, 
or did the WNBA send you an orange a orange hoodie and you're and you're uh and, and you you know you're uh you're wearing it and and it's like oh yeah I'm doing my part to support but did you actually put any money behind it? Are are you are you actually investing in the WNBA? And so that that's a I think that's a thing that just I don't know it kind of kind of it it, it uh, what's that phrase that's that phrase it, it grinds my gears like I'm just like dude. You're not even, you're not even supporting. You're, you're not even supporting. Uh, and I'm like, here, here I am. I'm like, I have, I don't have nothing, uh, to the amount of money that, that, that some of these, uh, big name people have and they're not putting no money in the WNBA and I'm putting a lot of my money in the WNBA, <laughs> like, you know? Um, but yeah, I, but, but, but us, but the people who are here, like, I know y'all be supporting the WNBA because y'all be saying, oh, I bought, I bought this, I bought this, you know, I got season tickets, I bought tickets to a game, you know. Um, and I and I, I do want to encourage y'all to continue to do that. Continue to support the WNBA. I, I like with your with your finances because it's it's important. You know, we don't we don't we as regular people don't have the most money in the world. Uh, but um with the with the with the few coins that we do have, you know, us us being able to um to support is phenomenal. I think it's, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and, and it's needed. And so I would say, you know, um, uh, I, I would say to all, all the, all the, all the WNBA fans who are frustrated by other people, uh, who, who don't understand the game and don't understand what's going on and, and just want to complain about stuff. Um, I would just say, uh, keep, keep supporting Keep supporting with your dollars. Keep rocking out with the WNBA uh, because we're gonna keep growing. We're gonna continue to grow, um, and I and I'm excited about it. I really am. I really, really am. Michael says my Cardoso and Reese jerseys are wrapped tomorrow. Really? Uh, did you get the? Um, you must have got the 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 glad the the old uh, Rebel version, I assume, or, or or maybe you got the pinstripe one. So so when when that when those jerseys initially came came on sale, I was like. I wanted, to, I was going to buy it, but I was like, actually, let me wait because to, to be, to be honest with you, I already have, uh, those, those jerseys, um, that, you know, the, the old rebel Jersey and the pinstripe Jersey I already have those jerseys. I have one in, um, in a Candace Parker Jersey and the other one is a Dana Evans Jersey. And I didn't want to buy another of the same type of jersey just with a different player name on it so i was I, I was like okay let me wait a couple of days and let me see um and guys today the chicago sky unveiled a new they unveiled a new um a new jersey and i quickly i quickly bought that thing up i bought um i bought an angel reese jersey for myself with the new logo i mean with the new um design on it and um, my mom, I'm buying my mom a uh, Camila Cardozo jersey. Um, I haven't bought that yet, but I'm uh, once once this uh, stream is over, I'm gonna buy her that jersey. So we're both gonna be rocking um, two of our favorite players. She's gonna be rocking Camila Cardozo, and I am going to be rocking Angel Reese. All right. So so yeah, I do want to show I do want to show um, you all uh, the sky's new um, the sky's new. Um, merch so see so yeah, I do I do want to show that but shout out to Michael shout out to Michael for getting uh for getting a jersey all right and and that's pretty quick to, to get your jersey I wonder how long it's going to take me to get mine that I just ordered it might take a little bit but I don't mind I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. All right. So here is, here is the Chicago skies, New Jersey. Here's what it looks like. Uh, it's sky, it has sky town and it's a, it's a, like the sky on it. Um, I like it better than the old rebel Jersey. Uh, this is Brianna Turner repping the new Jersey. So this is what I ordered. I ordered this in, um, in Angel Reese's number today. Um, and then my mom, my mom is getting, uh, is getting um, um, Camilla's jersey.
Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, thank you so much, Kat, for the super chat. Kat says, Quita, help me understand how other countries are paying our players so much more. Is is that what our country thinks of women? Um, the thing to note is that um, the in in countries like Russia, China, and others, um, the teams are owned by super super millionaires, if not billionaires. Um, oligarchs in Russia you owned um, teams where WNBA players would play. Um, and there are no salary caps. So they could play, they can pay players whatever they want. So that's why you saw, you know, the year that um, uh, Diana Tarazi was playing in Russia and her Russia, her, her team paid her um, to, to sit out a season in the WNBA. Um, that's because these Russian teams and, and, and well, WNBA players aren't going to rush anymore. Um, but when they were, they were getting paid so much money. Um, you know, in Turkey, you know, players get play, paid a good amount of money. In China, they get paid. Um, you, you have um, Liz Cambage, she was getting paid a million dollars to to play a season um, in China. Uh, the reason why is because they're owned by billionaires and there's no salary cap. So it's not about... Um, it's not about what our, our our country thinks of women. It, it's about them not having a salary cap. Yes, Kelsey. Yes, Spartic. Um, Spartic had. Um, when you talk about the top women's basketball players ever to play the game, at some point they played at Spartic. Uh, Spartic is a Russian team. Um, they just had. It was owned by an oligarch. They just had. Oodles and oodles and oodles of money. Lots of money. And um, they, it was a status thing. It was a status thing where um, billionaires wanted to show how much wealth they had. And they was like, okay, well, I, hey, I, I'm going to pay my way to winning a championship by, by um, getting all of this top talent, you know? To, to play for my team. Um, so yeah, I, that's just something to, something to know. That is, that's something to know. Uh, Access says, please explain why we have a salary cap. I mean, because um, I believe just about every league in America has a salary cap. Um. And, and, and salary caps help you to not have a unbalanced team. Every, you know, the NBA has a salary cap, MLB, um, uh, NFL, you know, basically all leagues in America, all the major leagues in America have a salary cap where um, teams have a certain amount that they can spend on a, uh, on, on their roster. And if they go over that, they have to pay a penalty of sorts. Um, it's, it's just, it's just how it is. And, um, overseas, a lot of times it's not, it's not like that. They don't have the same, that same type of type of deal. So, so yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Tin says, play fantasy WNBA on ESPN. I'm, I'm obsessed. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Um, Michael, uh, thank you so much for the super chat. Michael says, quit it when you started WNBA fantasy league for the awesome people of the internet. I can do that. I can do that. Um, repeat tour says Patreon exclusive. Oh, actually, actually, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Not a, not a bad idea at all. Um, but guys, also, uh, guys, if y'all are on my Patreon, um, if y'all are interested in, in, in doing the, uh, doing the regular, um, the, um, oh my goodness. Can I talk today? Um, if, if y'all, 
so tomorrow is uh is awesome people of the internet Friday hangout. Um, so that means it's gonna be the second edition of our um uh, uh hot take of the week thing. Um, I don't think we've had a taker yet who want who wants to do tomorrow. So if y'all are if y'all are Patreon folks and if you, if y'all haven't seen the post I po posted on Patreon earlier today, um, if y'all want to do if y'all want to do that. Um, Hit me up on Patreon uh, so I can get you set up for tomorrow's edition of either Talk That Talk or um, or uh, Hot Take of the Week, okay? Uh, Michael says I submitted a take for the week. <laughs> y'all, actually, guys, do, do, would y'all would y'all want um would y'all want Michael to have a uh, have a uh, more of a recurring um a recurring, um, uh, segment, um, for the channel. Cause guys, Michael did a fantastic job last week. I don't know if y'all watched last week's edition of awesome people of the internet uh, Friday hangout. Um, and, uh, Michael, I didn't see your, I didn't see your post on Patreon, but, um, yeah, I'll take a look. I'll take a look and, um, and we can, we can get you to uh, do this week's if, if no one, if we got no other takers, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, oh, Michael, I'm looking at yours right now. I, I think that's a really good, that's a, that's a, that's a, um, I wouldn't say that's a hot take. That's a, uh, I, I would say that's a talk your talk type of thing. Um, yeah, I think that's a talk your talk type of thing. Uh, but, but we can have you on though. If you, if you cool with that. And Michael, it looks like every, everybody, uh, everybody's, <laughs> everybody's saying bring Michael back. Yeah. Okay. All right, Michael. Um, I will, I will DM you on Patreon. Um, if you're available tomorrow. Um, Ooh, Elsbeth has a take. Elsbeth, are you on Patreon? If you are, we can have you on. <laughs> It is a Patreon exclusive, so I, I do want to make sure that Patreon folks have have something special for them. But if you're if you're a if 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 someone's on my Patreon and wants to take this as a hot take, um, that would be that would be really good. I I I, I want to hear I want to hear the argument for that. I, I want to hear an argument for that for sure. All right, Michael, you're in for tomorrow. <laughs> CAC says hot take, Michael. Y'all, um, I really do believe, and, and Michael, this is totally your decision, absolutely your decision, but I, I really, I really would love to see, um, Michael giving his take more on stuff because he did a fantastic job and he has good takes, um, Uh, but also he, he mentioned about like high school sports and like, that'd be cool, Michael, if you ever, if you did like a high school sports thing, you'd have the stamp of approval from the awesome people of the internet. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Sharna says Dwayne Wade needs to visit the facility in Chicago. He's already visited. He's already visited the facility. He's visited it. Um, Aiden says, do you think the sky should move to the United Center for the Caitlin Clark games? Um, they might. Um, they might. Um, though I believe... I'm gonna check uh, Annie's uh, Twitter because I believe she, I, I believe um, there were people that were doing a petition. Um, lots of people are doing petitions now. <laughs> um, doing a petition about um, about the sky getting a. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Guys, I'm gonna share my screen real quick again. Um, all right. Shout out to uh shout out to Annie Costable. I always I say her na her last name wrong, so I don't know exactly know how to pronounce her last name. But but she is the Chicago Sun Times reporter for the Chicago Sky. Guys, if y'all if y'all want to do a um um if you, if again, 
we talk about uh, some of the some of the players or some of the journalists who are doing a great job in the women's basketball space. Annie, y'all need to follow her on a uh, on a uh, Twitter, okay? Y'all need to follow her on Twitter because she not only does a lot of great reporting for the Chicago Sky, but for women's basketball in general, highly recommend y'all follow her. Um, one of the best reporters in the game for women's basketball. Uh, so um, she did say on X earlier, um, I've seen there's a position to get Sky Games against the Fever uh, to the United Center. The United Center is not available uh, for the Sky's June 23rd game. When I asked about the August date, the response from the Sky was not a no. It was, as of today, games will be at Wintrust. All right, so there you have it um, from Annie. Um, that that game for June the 23rd, they can't go to United Center. It's not available. Uh, but for the August matchup between um, between Indiana, maybe. So so yeah, that's the uh, that's the news on that. Um, I forgot who actually asked that question, but hopefully hopefully that that's your answer. All right. All right. But guys, the you know the Washington Mystics are have moved there uh, in, in game against Indiana uh, because of uh, you know they they want lots of fans in the building, which makes sense. Which makes a lot of sense. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for the super chat. Michael says, did y'all see the Mystics move their Indiana game to the Wizards Arena now? Yeah, they did. Yeah. And guys, uh, when we talk about the Caitlin, the the Caitlin effect is real, but but also also guys, the thing to note is that like these arenas are small. So yes, yes, the Washington Mystics have moved their game. They have moved their game to um, to a, a bigger arena because the arena that they were in was. Not good. The arena that the arena that that the Washington Mystics play in is very very small. We we talked about this in um I believe we talked about this in a in a previous stream. Um, the arena that the Washington Mystics play in they play in the entertainment and sports arena in the D.C. area, and that arena only holds forty two hundred people. Okay. 4,200 people uh, with the, the entertainment and sports arena, which is where the Mystics play all, the, all their games. So, of course, of course, 4,200 fans maximum, of course, you're going you're gonna to sell out a, a, of, of, a, of a, um, a, a game where, where, um, where uh, Caitlin Clark is playing. Of course. It's, you're only, you only have 4,200 seats. Wintress Arena has 10,000. So, you know, more more people can actually watch the game. Um, so, yeah, the, the Washington Mystics have moved um, that game because their arena is crazy small. Um, initially, uh, the Washington Mystics, they were, they were in the Washington Wizards uh, arena. And they got moved out. Um, now they're in a very, very small arena. And now they're now they're moving back, so so yeah. Uh, uh, they they posted on. Uh, wait. Um. Oh wait. I I want I want to show. I want to show the Washington Mystics. Uh, all right. Let's let's show let's show what the Washington Mystics put on uh, on social earlier today. Um, they said, we heard you loud and clear. The June 7th game against the Indiana fever is being relocated from the entertainment and sports arena, 4,200 fans, um, to the capital one arena. We can't wait to see all of the DMV in the building, uh, tickets on sale, April the 23rd. So yeah, they are moving venues. Um, and if you all are wondering, um, how many people does the Capital One uh, Arena hold? Uh, 
Um, well, that capacity is 20,000. All right. So they currently play in a 4,200 gym, 4,200 size gym. Now they're moving to a 20,000, um, arena for, for that one game. Um, I, I would say uh, this is, this is one of the things that are, that's hindering, um, the WNBA, uh, playing in very, very small arenas where, um, you can't, you literally can't grow the game. You literally can't grow the game in DC. Um, because they have a max of 4,200 fans that can go to a game. Um, so absolutely. Is it great for those 4,200 fans? Yes. But also they still don't, they still don't even totally sell out of, um, those, those games as well. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the thing, you know, um, uh, but they're not alone. Um, they're not alone in this. Uh, there are other teams in the WNBA that don't have that many, uh, that many, that, that much space for games. Um, so for example, for example, uh, the Atlanta dream, play at the Gateway Center Arena in College Park. Um, and that arena is even smaller. <laughs> it's it's even it's even smaller than where um than where the Washington Mystics play. They play at an arena of um it's about thirty five hundred people can attend those games. So yeah. Yeah, Dante, you're absolutely right. Yeah, same thing for the Atlanta Dream. They play, um, <laughs> they play in the hood at, at College Park Gateway Center. Only thirty five hundred seats. Yeah, it's it's and their games, their games be popping. You know, uh, when I when I look at Atlanta Dream games, especially last season, I felt like basically every game seemed like a sellout because I mean you only have thirty five hundred seats, so it's 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 hard to grow the game when you don't have that many people who can actually go to it in person. And I understand that that teams want the arenas to feel full, right? You want the arenas to feel full. Great. So make sure you're at an arena that's a little bit bigger than your normal fan base, right? Um, but the fact that you... The fact that you have... Um, yeah. The fact that you can't even, like, you can't even bring 4,000 people to watch an Atlanta Dream game in Atlanta. It's problematic. You know? Um, so so hopefully as as the WNBA continues to expand, that's something that's on number one on the list. You got to have an arena. Your home arena has to have more than 12,000 fans that can go. The capacity needs to be more than 12,000. Because I think it's important. You know? Um... So, yeah. Uh, Donovan says, who has the biggest arena in the WNBA? Um, well, the uh, Liberty plays at the Brooklyn Nets Arena. Uh, the Phoenix Mercury play at the Phoenix Suns Arena. Um, the, the Seattle Storm play at the new Climate Pledge Arena. Um, the LA Sparks play... Uh, play... Um, uh, they play where, um, what's the name of that arena called? Where the Lakers play. I, for, I forgot the name of that arena. Um, they changed the name. Uh, the Indiana Fever play at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Um, so it's one of those. I don't know. It's one of those. They, they, they all are roughly around uh, 17, 18, 19,000 um, uh, in terms of fans that can attend. So it's one of those. Um, I can look that up though. I can look that up. Uh, CAC, uh, Quid, do you have an update on your merch? It's still coming. Um, guys, the, <laughs> the problem I am running into with my merch stuff is that literally because I do everything on this channel myself, 
it sometimes it it feels instead of uh instead of like figuring out like little things I need to do to get this merch stuff all up and running, um, it's like I it's like I don't I don't have sometimes I don't have like the the mental space to do it, and I'm like oh I got a video I have to do, and then once the video is over, I was like okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do um merch stuff. And I don't feel like it, <laughs> so so I, I I got I gotta uh, create mental bandwidth to just finish it. It's like like literally I got most of the design most of the designs done. Um, I'll be making the shirts myself, so I'm I'm getting a um um I'm I'm getting a a, a shirt press to come in. Um, I'm ordering the shirts themselves, and uh, yeah, it's 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 coming. It's just. I do apologize, guys, for the delay. It, it's it's one of those things where I'm like, hmm, I have a video I need to make tonight. I have a live stream I need to make tonight. And I push push back doing the merch stuff until after that's over. And then when it's over, I'm exhausted and I don't really feel like it. So, so yeah, it, it's still it's still coming. I, I need to eventually figure out, um, I don't know. It's, 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 it's tough. It's literally, it's literally tough doing all like this whole, this whole thing by myself. <laughs> it's like really, really tough. Um, uh, but that's not, that's not me complaining. That's just me stating a fact. Um, I truly do, truly, truly do love what I'm doing here. Um, and I wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Um, but that's why uh, I, I do apologize for, for the delays. It's just, uh, uh, sometimes it's like, man, I really do want to do a live stream. Cause like, cause like, um, cause like, uh, today I was actually thinking, oh, I actually, actually I'm not going to do a live stream so I can get some stuff done. Um, like on the, on the business side of the channel, get some stuff done with like the merch and whatnot. But then I saw the news drop about Haley and then, um, and then, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah. And then I was like, Oh crap. Like, <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, I, I got, I gotta, I gotta do a stream tonight. And so, yeah, no, no merch work for me tonight <laughs> because once I finish this, I'm gonna have to go to sleep cause I got to get up early. Cause I got a lot of stuff to do for my actual job tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Keith Shep, thank you so much for the super chat. Keith says, uh, that that's crazy here in Texas. You have high school teens that play in larger gyms. Yeah, that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Um, that is that is really really crazy. <laughs> Didi and Tennessee says, "What do you need to go for?" <laughs> I I gotta figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> I I gotta I gotta figure that out. Um. Uh, Kojo says, "As a one woman show, you have to pace yourself, Quita. It's a marathon, not a sprint." Yeah, you're right. You're right. I just, uh, I just go gung ho for everything and I like get overwhelmed. And then I like, I have so many ideas and thoughts and stuff that I'm like, Oh, I got to do this. Got to do this. And, um, and yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a whole thing. That's a whole thing. And I'm like, I, I also, I'm very like hands on where I feel like I have to do everything myself because like it, it has to be the exact way it is in my head. So, so that's one of the things where like, I could just like get someone else to um to to help make stuff for me, but but at the same time I'm like, well, but like I, I want it to be a certain way, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's a it's a whole thing. It's a it's a whole it's a whole thing. Um uh yeah, T Monique, you're right. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is a lot. I didn't expect it. I didn't I didn't I don't know, I didn't expect for it to be as hard as it is. <laughs> but y'all yeah, it is, it is, it is. Especially when you're trying to actually make something a real business or whatever, but you know. Uh, anyway, guys, not enough rambling about me. Uh, we are supposed to be talking about women's basketball. That's what this whole that's what this whole thing is about. But guys, um, I mean that's basically the stream, guys. Um, I I I, I um, wanted to make sure you all were aware about what's happening when in the in the transfer portal with some of the news that that, that has happened, guys. If y'all have joined late, I do want to just do a quick uh, recap just to let you all know generally what has been what has been happening um so talia scott has opted to go to um auburn she has decided to stay in the sec and is, will be with auburn next season um we have Haley van liff that that um that went to that has decided to go to tcu 
Um, she spent one year at LSU, now is going to TCU. She will be um, welcomed um, by Maddie Schur, who also has decided to go to, to, to uh, TCU. Um, Maddie Schur has decided to transfer from, uh, from Kentucky, heading to TCU to play for her former coach, and Mark Campbell, who Mark Campbell really is doing some huge, huge things at TCU. He is bringing Oregon to TCU. Some of the stuff that Oregon was able to do in terms of the transfer portal, in terms of just winning games, uh, he is bringing that over to TCU. Um, and, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be very, 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 very fun. Um, also, a thing to note is that uh, um, uh, both Haley and uh uh, and Hannah um, Cavender are are both going back to Miami. Um, first, Haley Cavender um, had um, committed to TCU. She committed to t TCU in um, November of 2023. Um, now that her sister Hannah announced yesterday that she was returning back to women, women's college basketball at Miami, uh, she, she announced that yesterday. And today, Haley Cavender... Um, announced that she is following her sister to go back to Miami for another year. Um, we also we also um, talked about Lucy Olson, who is transferring from Villanova and heading heading on over to uh, Iowa. Um, Lucy is a like she's she's very good. She can score the basketball really really well. She is not Caitlin Clark, but she will be able to bring a lot of scoring. Um, that that I will be missing um, next season, and and yeah, so so you know, Lucy's gonna be doing her thing at at, at Iowa. Iowa has um, a huge amount of freshmen coming in the door, and then you also have uh, some of the upperclassmen who will be um, you know doing their thing as well. So yeah. Uh, BB says, "Where do you think Deja Kelly is heading?" I am I am not sure at all. Honestly, I have I have zero, zero um, uh, uh, sort of feelers out for where Deja Kelly is going to go. I I am I am really not sure. Um, yeah, I yeah I'm not sure. I saw some people saying that she was she was going to LSU. I don't I don't think I don't think she's going to LSU. I don't think so. Uh, Kojo says, I get that Texas is a big sports state, uh, but I hadn't realized TCU uh, specifically was a destination program for women's basketball. It is now. Uh, with uh, with Mark Campbell going to TCU, um, that has made TCU into a, a destination for women's basketball. Uh, Mark Campbell is one of, the, one of the greatest recruiters in women's college basketball. He has recruited some phenomenal players to go to Oregon. Um. And he, TCU is like, hey, we want to get in the women's basketball game. And so we're going to pay for a very, very high quality coach. And they did that. And that's what it takes. If you, if you want to be a program that, that wants to be known for women's basketball, it's going to take you investing in a top, top coach. And then having, having them be able to build out their program. And then the players are going to come. They just got Mark Hamill. And you had Jaden Owens, you had um, Sedona Prince, you had Haley Cavender for a hot second, you know. Um, now Haley Van Liff, Maddie Schur, you're you're having players say step up and say, "Yep, I yeah I, I believe in this coach. I, I know this coach is really good. I know I know that he has created a great uh, a, a, a great um uh he's." He's developed a great staff around him, um, and I, that's that's what I, that's what I want to play for. And so, um, it, it's it's one of those things where if you shell out the money, if you shell out the money, you can actually you can actually make some stuff happen. Um, Gabrielle, I'm not I'm not sure either. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where Kiki goes. I I think there's just a you know, I I I'm I'm waiting for um I'm waiting to hear reporting from 
journalist about like uh where where she's visiting and stuff like that before I like come to real thoughts because she can really go anywhere. I think it's likely. I feel like it's likely that she's gonna either move to the SEC or the ACC. Um, it's possible that she does stay in um, in um, California and goes to USC. That is possible. Um, I've, I've been seeing people talk about uh, Kiki or Afin going to USC. Um, that's possible. But again, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I am not really sure. All right, guys, that is the stream. Guys, let me know in the chat. Let me know um, what topics y'all want to cover tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow we'll, we'll have Michael come back. Uh, for um, his uh, edition of Talk That Talk. Uh, but but specifically, um, uh, what what do you all want to talk about tomorrow? Tomorrow we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about the WNBA and um, talk about what you all can expect, talk about the um, – I'll probably talk about the, the schedule um, for, for games on, on, on TV and whatnot. So, yeah. Uh, Michael says people need to wake up on Mark Campbell at TCU. They were ranked before they lost a <laughs> they lost eight hundred players <laughs> to the to injury this year. Now, um, now with those two, watch out. Yeah, <laughs> they lost eight hundred players. Eight hundred players, according to Michael. But anyway, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, Mar Mark Campbell's he's he's a he's really really good at what he does. He's really really good. Um, and had it not been for all those in injuries, it would have been a different story because TCU was killing. They were before all the injuries. Just Chris says, can we talk about the shoe controversy? Um, do y'all, do y'all want to, do y'all want to, um, do y'all want to talk about the shoe, shoe controversy? Let me know in the chat. If y'all want me to talk about the shoe controversy tomorrow, um, put shoe in the chat. Put shoe in the chat so I can know generally how many people uh, um, how many people want to want to want to um, talk about that. DD in Tennessee says Patreon members, let's put it down for Quitty Love Sports. This is an awesome platform. Let's show up. Thank you, thank you, DD in Tennessee. And guys, um, now speaking of uh, speaking of Patreon, I do want to just say a huge thank you to all of the folks who are um paying members on patreon i really do appreciate it guys we have two tiers we have a five dollar tier we have a ten dollar tier um for you to help support the channel and guys i do have some fantastic people i do want to thank thank you so much to chelsea uh for um i think chelsea just joined patreon thank you so much Ch oh chelsea joined patreon during this stream thank you thank you thank you so much chelsea for that um, thank you to Jack. Thank you to Kevin. Thank you to Winona. Thank you to uh, CF20. Thank you to Joy. Thank you to FW Cult. Thank you to Malika. Um, thank you to Grace by God. Thank you to Lejeune. Thank you to Repeat Tour, a.k.a. Michael. Thank you to Moni. Thank you to Ghost of Rex. Thank you to Caitlin. Thank you to that dude right there. Thank you to Holly. Thank you to Happy Hoosier. Thank you to Rachel. Thank you to JB. Thank you to David. Thank you to Michelle. Thank you to Trisha. Thank you to Adrian. Thank you to Montreal. Thank you to Chance. Thank you to Anthony. Thank you to Nolan. Thank you to Charles 19. Thank you to Didi in Tennessee. Thank you to Kyra. Thank you to LK. And thank you to Annette. Thank you all so, so much for supporting this channel on Patreon. I really do appreciate it, guys. If y'all do want to hop on on Patreon and support me there, y'all can do that at patreon.com slash Sports. Thank y'all so, so, so much um, for uh, for um, rocking with me there. I really do appreciate it. Like, it, it truly does mean mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, Next Day Air says, uh, that's cool. I'm going to subscribe to the Patreon. LOL, she won't kick me out of there. Next air, you're funny. <laughs> um, next air, how you how you feeling about your uh how you feeling about your uh, LSU team next year? How you feeling about them? How how you feeling? Uh, 
All right, so we got some people uh, wanting to talk about the shoe stuff uh, tomorrow. We can do that. We can do that. And um, guys, just be ready for my take on that. Be be ready for my take on that. Um, be ready for it. Whoa! Thank you so much to uh, thank you so much to Michael, uh, Jan, Michael, just joined Patreon. I just got the notification. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michael, for uh, for um. Rocking out with me on Patreon. Appreciate you. And guys, just know, just know, when you join Patreon, you have an opportunity to participate in the, um, in the Talk Yo Talk um, uh, segment on Fridays. Or if, if, if you have a hot take, a hot take as well. You can do that. Uh, when you join, when you join Patreon, you have the, uh, the option to join for a uh, Friday stream, but again, you gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta make sure to, um, you gotta make sure that you are comfortable being on camera. That's that's one of the requirements. You gotta be comfortable being on camera, um, and you can and you can join us. Okay, okay. <laughs> Kojo says I sent a Quita hot take coming. I mean, yeah, it's it's coming. It's yeah. I I I gotta I gotta I gotta. Yeah. Tomorrow. Shoegate. Let's talk about it. Okay. Let's 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 talk about Shoegate tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um High Vibration says Quita needs uh some type of raffle raffle contest for Patreon members to win the extra season ticket she got. Oh. Um that actually might be not a bad idea. Um so guys, I, I do have a, um, I have a, um, two season, I have two tickets to every game. I have two season tickets to every Sky game. Um, maybe I can't, hmm. Maybe what I'll do is I will, um, pick one or two games this season and I'll, um, maybe I'll pick one or two games this season and I will open it up to the Patreon folks, um, and um, you all, we, we can do a raffle or something like that. Um, so for the, for the Patreon folks who are able to actually make it to Chicago, <laughs> for, uh, for 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 one of you all, one of you all to win when um, when um, a ticket or something. So yeah, I, I think I think we could do that. That seems kind of fun. Uh, thank you so much to Mary for just for joining Patreon. Just got on a notification. Uh, shout out to Mary uh, for joining. Appreciate you. Um, but Patreon folks, um, let me, let me know in the chat if y'all, if y'all want to do that. I think that could kind of be fun. I don't know, but I, I know all the, some of y'all are like from different parts of the country. And so I'm not quite sure if, if that would be appealing to y'all. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll put it, I'll put in the chat in Patreon guys. And I do, I am curious to see if, if, if y'all would actually be interested in that, because I do know some of y'all live, you know, in different parts of the, of, of the country. Um, so I don't, I don't know how appealing it is to, to win tickets to a game in Chicago. That means you have to travel all the way to Chicago. So I don't know guys. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to you guys letting me know, um, how interested y'all are in that idea. But I think that could be, I mean, I'd be down for it. Um, that'd be really cool. Um, but guys, don't forget, we will have, uh, meetups this season. Uh, we, we may have meetups, uh, this season. Uh, T-Dub says, uh, Quita, I may, I may do the hot take. Okay. All right. Um, if you can re reply to my Patreon post, okay. Reply to my Patreon post. That would be fantastic. That would be Fantastic. All right, JB said he'd be down for it. Okay, all right, all right. So maybe maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll do it. Um. All right, guys. Uh, we have uh, we have um, sort of uh exhausted the conversations for the day my brain is just turning into mush and i need to go to sleep so i can go to work tomorrow 
<laughs> um, but I do appreciate y'all so much for rocking with me. Um, uh, I really do appreciate appreciate it. Um, I uh, I am very very thankful for y'all for just being really really amazing. Um, yeah, y'all are awesome people of the internet for a reason because y'all truly are awesome people of the internet. Y'all. Uh, are invested in the future of the WNBA. Y'all are invested in the future of women's college basketball. And I love it. I really do. Um, so I thank y'all. I thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Thank y'all for the support. Um, and guys, let's talk tomorrow for a special edition of Awesome People of the Internet Friday Hangout, where we will be joined by someone. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it may be Michael. It may be, um, who, who said somebody said, uh, they was going, um, I don't know if y'all, y'all, if y'all are on Patreon, y'all want to do a hot take or whatever, um, post it there, but likely we'll have Michael, um, tomorrow. Um, and then we'll, whoever wants to volunteer, volunteer. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, uh, thank y'all so, so much for, for rocking with me, Michael. I will message you on Patreon in just a sec. Uh, thank y'all for rocking with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, I will talk to y'all tomorrow. Guys, tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is, fr tomorrow is Friday. So like, you know, let's, uh, let's have a good day tomorrow. And then we're going to have a, a good evening talking about some women's basketball. Because what's better than talking about some women's basketball? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, guys. Until next time. Bye.